Hey, Kerry Green here. I am the client happiness guy and founder at podcastfasttrack.com. And we've been working with hundreds of clients over the last five years. And we've learned a lot of lessons about mistakes people make, best practices that podcasters fail to learn or learn and become very successful as a result. So today, I wanted to share with you one of the most important things that I've discovered that holds a lot of podcasters back from really dialing in their process and making their podcast production side more successful. And it has to do with this issue right up here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's podcast workflow. Podcast workflow is a massive thing. And what I mean when I say podcast workflow is do you have a sequence in place of step after step after step that are thought through and planned so that you're not, first of all, missing anything in your podcast production, and then secondly, so that you are putting things in the right order and you're making sure that you can get to step D because step C was done. You understand? Because D was dependent on C. So what I want to do in this episode of the podcast, and by the way, there is a video of this podcast as well, because I figured this is kind of a visual thing. It helps to see it visually. So you can listen if you're on the road or in your treadmill or whatever. And you'll get the gist, but go to the show notes at podcastfasttrack.com slash 104 or swipe to the app or the description in the app on your podcast player and you'll be able to find the link to this video there as well. So I wanted to go through this visually and I'm using a system here on my whiteboard that helps me to sequence things out. It involves the whiteboard and it involves sticky notes, okay? So I know in the video, it's hard to read these sticky notes. So I'm going to make that possible in just a moment by showing you how I do this. But each of the sticky notes represents a step in the process. And so the first thing that I do is I write down on sticky notes, an individual sticky note for every step, every step I can think of that has anything to do with my podcast production. And a good way to do this is the next time you start producing your podcast, the next time you start producing an episode, you just budget in some extra time and write down each step as you do it. Do it as detailed as you need to do it so that you can uh, not miss anything. And you will find as you do that, there are things that are actual steps in your process that you would not have thought of otherwise because it's just such second nature to you or you do it without thinking. And so you need to make sure that you're taking the time to get every single step of your podcast. Now, let me show you on the whiteboard here, and I'm going to try to describe this for those of you who are listening on audio. I have all of my, my episodes here, or my steps here, rather. I have this very first one. I'm going to write it out here for you, and it's choose the topic, okay? Now, the very first thing you need to do, obviously, for a podcast episode is choose your topic. What is this episode going to be about? Okay, now, I suggest to all of my clients, I suggest to everyone, that you work these out ahead of time. Spend an hour, spend two hours getting a big list of topics that you know your audience needs to hear and that you want to cover. Those may be guest episodes where you invite someone on to speak to the topic. It may be a, a solo episode where you're actually teaching or coaching something like I'm doing right now. But regardless, you need to choose the topic for that particular episode of your podcast. And the thing that you want to be careful about is that you don't just do this kind of fly by the seat of your pants. Because if you don't have a list of topics, you're going to be every week hunting and, and scraping to find content, which leads to poorer content. You get what I'm saying? Your, your content is not going to be so stellar because you didn't have time to plan it. You didn't have to, time to really think about it. So you're going to choose your topic. And that's what this first sticky note up here says, is choose my topic. That's the first step in my podcast production. This next one, let me grab my eraser here, which is a handy dandy Kleenex. Let me erase this so we don't confuse anybody. Okay, the next step in my process is research or prep. Okay, so, oh, I said perp. That's a very different thing than prep. <laughs> research or prep. And if I could spell this morning, it'd be great. So, research or prep. Now, what does that entail? Well, it entails whatever it takes for you to get the content you need, to get a bullet point outline for your episode, to uh, discover who it is you want to invite onto your show. You see, this research and prep step is vital. 
And for quality podcasts, this takes a bit. And I'm only talking about um, a talking head kind of a podcast like I'm doing right now or a podcast where you invite a guest on. I'm not talking about the more narrative styles of podcasts that you might want to produce where you're telling a story, you're drawing in resources like sound effects and, and other people's voices and things like that. I mean, that's a much more complicated process which requires this step even more. You see, the research and prep step, I believe, is what goes on to making, what goes into making a much more professional sounding podcast because you actually sound like you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, because in a sense you do, because you've researched, you've prepped, you've gotten yourself ready. It's kind of like when you uh, are gonna say you're a, an actor and you're gonna do a stage performance of some sort. Well, you have rehearsals over and over and over with the other actors leading up to that performance. You have dress rehearsals where you try to go straight through costumes, sets, blocking, everything in place so that when the actual performance time comes, you're able to pull it off without a hitch. You see, that's what your research and prep step is all about. You want to be able to pull this thing off flawlessly, maybe flawlessly is too exaggerated of a term, but you want to be able to pull this thing off with high quality. And you're doing that by preparing. You see, flying by the seat of your pants sometimes gets us by. Other times, eh, most of the time actually, it's not so good. It's not such a great thing. So this research and prep step, I can't emphasize this enough. And perhaps I'll do another episode of the podcast where I am able to kind of walk through what I do for research and prep. And maybe the previous step as well. What I do to come up with content episodes, I think is very vital. So I'm going to erase this one, the research and prep step, and go on to my next one. You see right here on my chart, if you're not watching this on video, what I have is the top section has a green line going to the right, and it says solo episodes. So in essence, if I'm doing a solo episode, like I'm doing right now with no guest, I skip all of these steps that are down here on the bottom because these are related to guests. So I go straight on over to here and do this is the next step, this is the next. Now let me stop for a moment and tell you why I use sticky notes. I use sticky notes rather than just writing this out on the whiteboard so that I can easily swap the order. You see, I can take this sticky note off, move it over here if I want to. I can take this one and put it up here and adjust everything down. You see, it's easier to rearrange things, kind of like a word processor. You can cut and paste, so to speak, except you're pulling and pasting back onto your sequence. You see, the sticky notes make that very possible. This is a great way to set goals as well, by the way, using this kind of thing. But regardless, that's why I have two different lines here, so to speak. The top line has nothing on it at this section because in a solo episode, I'm just going to skip all of these steps and go to the next one. So right now, I'm going to go down here and talk about guest episodes, okay? Because this is the next thing that would be in the sequence if I'm actually doing a guest episode. And that is, I'm going to notify my VA or... I'll have to do this myself if I don't have a VA, of my specific topic, of the desired guest that I want to have on this episode, and of the resources needed. So, in other words, I'm going to reach out to my guest, and I'm going to gather resources. That's essentially what this step is all about. So I'm going to reach out to my guests and gather resources. If you have a VA, this is a great step to delegate. And you can create a template sort of letter that you send out to all your guests and you just train your VA how to personalize it, to put that guest's name in, to uh, put the name of their area of expertise in. So you personalize it and you make it an appeal to them personally, asking them to be on your show. Now, some tips on this. If you know the guest already, this is much simpler. If you don't know the guest, but you know someone who knows the guest, you can ask that person to make the introduction, or you can ask that person to warm up your appeal by saying, hey, I've got this friend, Joe Smith's his name. He's going to be contacting you about being on his podcast because he's got this, this, this in mind that he wants to talk about on one of his episodes, and you're a specialist in that. You see, you can have a friend, an ally, help you with this by warming up that with, a, with kind of a, a lukewarm introduction. You see what I'm saying? So, so this step is the first thing you need to do when you're reaching out to a guest. You need to reach out and you need to gather the resources needed in order to have a good conversation with that person. Now that may be uh, reading their book, it may be reading some of their websites, watching videos, listening to other podcasts they've been on, 
whatever it takes for you to research that guest and know intelligently what it is you're going to talk with them about and how you're going to approach the interview. That's what you need to do. So that's this first step in the guest section here on my timeline. Now I'm going to erase these now and I'm going to the next step and that is reach out to the guest using the template. It's kind of the same thing I just said here, but the first was mainly if I have a VA doing it, I'm going to be informing them of things. So I see this is how minutely I break out these steps so that I don't miss a thing in the process because I, I make a lot of assumptions in my own mind about how this is going to go. But when I can document it step by step by step, even the tiny steps, it helps me. So I'm going to go into the next one. And this is, I just said, the guest schedules a time to record. So in essence, the guest has said yes. And they use a scheduling link, which I provide in the email that my VA or myself sends out. And they choose a time that I've already pre-designated on my own calendar when I'm available to do the recordings. And so I'm, I'm assuming that if the guest says, yes, I want to be on this podcast, they're going to click that link and they're going to schedule a time because I've just invited them to do that. Now, what are some resources that you can use for this? Well, I use an app called You Can Book Me. And it's youcanbook.me is what it is. And it's a free app with a lot of functionality. And then you can pay for kind of a hyped up version that has a lot of other things. I still use the free app and I use it all the time. I mean, I haven't found ways. Well, actually I have. I found ways that the upgrade would help, but it's still not necessary. I don't have to pay for it yet. So I've been using this for about four years and I love it. There's other ones called Schedule.ly. There's others called... Um, well, you, you can just Google a scheduling app or scheduling software and you'll find all kinds of vers uh, versions of this that you can use to have people book time on your calendar. It's a wonderful app, saves you a lot of time having to deal with time zone issues and confusion over that. That's huge. Okay, now this one I really don't have to have on my timeline because it's not an action I take, but I like to have it there because it reminds me, okay, I'm waiting on something before I can move on to this next step. Okay, so they're scheduling a time for recording. And once that's done, I've got here on the bottom of this note, and I'm realizing I need to actually create another note for this, put another sticky note in here as this next step. I need to schedule a reminder. to the guest. Okay, now this is one of those functionalities that the scheduling apps will do for you if you pay for the upgraded version. Okay, you can set a time where it will remind the person, hey, you've got this appointment coming up at this time. And that way that it doesn't get missed and you miss your appointment with your guest. I don't pay for that in my version. So I need a sticky note in here that reminds me to set a reminder. Okay. And so what I would do is I use a CRM, a, client, a customer relationship management software uh, called HubSpot. I would set a task in HubSpot to remind me on this date to remind the guest that we have this. And what I actually would do is I would assign that to my VA. And my VA would send another form letter, see, customized to the person. It's simple, not something complex that nobody can do. I mean, anybody can do this. And they send that out on my behalf as a part of my team, you see, and they're just reminding the guest, they're helping the guest remember this appointment's coming up. We're so excited. Here's some things you can do to prepare. I also have, which I'll include in the, in the resources for this episode, a list of things, best practices that I send to my guests. It's a PDF download that they can walk through and say, make sure my microphone is set. Make sure I have the right microphone. Make sure I'm in a quiet room. Make sure I turn off all my noisemakers, you know, things like that to help them on their end do everything to help make this a better recording. I don't want to overwhelm my guests, but I also don't want them to come in just expecting to use this stupid little mic in the computer. You know, I want them to help me make this the best way of profiling and highlighting them possible. And so I'm going to send that reminder letter. Okay, going on this next one. Let me erase here. This next one is that my guest completes the form. Okay. And let me explain to you what this means. My guest completes, I'm going to call it my form. Okay. Now what is my form? I have an application, so to speak, 
on my website that I direct that guest to asking them to give me a bunch of information. Okay, it's their name, it's their email address, it's their cell phone in case we have technical issues and I need to get a hold of them right away. It's uh, a headshot photo, it's all their social media links. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. There's also a media release form that I ask them to fill out. It's a little bit of legalese they have to jump through, a hoop they have to jump through in order to be on my podcast to protect me and to protect them. You see, and all of that is part of them getting ready to be on my show. And professional level guests who are used to being in the spotlight in their particular niche are used to this kind of thing. You're not going to scare them off. And then people who are not so professional or coming up in the niche, they're going to see this form and it either A, will deter them and they say, I don't want to go through all this. Well, that's not a person you really want in your podcast anyway because they're not committed to quality and, and making putting the best foot forward, so to speak. Or they're going to see it and they're actually going to be flattered. Hey, this is a pretty important thing and I've been invited to be a part of it. And they are going to fill out that form with enthusiasm. Okay, so I've got this set up so that there's a Google form, free, completely free, that they complete. There is a document attached to a service I use called HelloSign. All these resources will be in the show notes for this episode at podcastfasttrack.com slash 104. And they sign the release. They fill out all the info using Google Forms. They can upload their images. I mean, everything they want, they can do right there on the one form. And they hit submit and I get a notification. There's a new person that's filled out a thing. So that is what this particular sticky note is about. It's just reminding me, okay, I can't go into the next step until the person fills out this form, okay? And then we're all ready to go. So after the guest completing the form, my next step is that I'm gonna confirm the recording and that's the day of the recording. This is really referring back to this reminder that I set back here, okay? This reminder is gonna pop up the day of the recording, the morning, and it's gonna tell me, hey, remind them about the recording and it's gonna come up that morning. I want it to be fresh, I want it to be exciting, I want it to be something that helps my guest be a good guest on my show. And so then I'm, I'm basically done with the guest steps on this whole thing, okay? They have done their part, I've done my part by researching, by preparing, and I'm moving on to the next step in my podcast workflow. Now do you see, let me pause here for a moment, do you see how this workflow, so far, even though we're not completed, enables you to think through everything that goes into the production of your podcast so that you can be more professional about it and so that you don't miss things. You do the same steps every single time. They're systematized where possible, like all these reminders and all the VA helping you and that kind of thing, so that you're taking the load of producing your podcast off of your plate as much as possible. You can use automation, you can use other people to do that, but you need to think this through and do it wisely. If there's not a guest on the show, I have this green line that goes across to the very next step. And that green line just tells me, no guest, I'm just gonna skip all that. So that's where we're picking up, is right there. Okay, this one is a test recording, and this means when we are actually on the call, whether it's with my guest or just doing a solo show, I wanna create a test recording. And what I'm doing is it's essentially a sound check. I'm testing my mics. I'm testing my guest mic if there's a guest. I'm making sure everything technically is plugged in, turned on, optimized, using the proper microphone, in a quiet room. I mean, all those sorts of things. I want to do a test recording so that I know I've done my very best to make the best podcast episode I can. If I'm using a service like Ringer or Zencaster or CleanFeed or some other service like Skype, I am going to do a test recording. I'm actually going to hit record. I'm going to record it for a minute. I'm going to stop it with, with both me and my guests talking if there's a guest involved. And I'm going to play that back before we actually start our recording because I want to ensure this thing's actually working like it's supposed to be working. You get it? So a test recording is vital. A lot of times podcasters skip this step. And then they don't listen to their final recording of the whole thing. And everything is just haywire in the recording. And they submit that to our team to do the editing for them. And it's just a mess. There, and sometimes there's nothing salvageable because the tech was off in the beginning. 
so you can take one minute to do this step of a test recording and save yourself all kinds of grief and potentially embarrassment with your guests if they're a high level professional in your niche. You don't have to screw it up. You can do the steps to troubleshoot ahead of time and make sure that you miss that. So the test recording is vital. Let's move on from the test recording. The next one is I'm going to record my main audio. Now that's just what I call the main chunk of an episode, okay? Where I'm having the teaching like I'm doing right now or where I'm having the conversation with my guest. I call it the main recording. And so I'm actually just going to record. After I've done my test, I know everything's good. I'm just going to start my recording and I'm going to have that great conversation with my guest or I'm going to do my teaching or coaching or whatever it is I'm doing on my podcast. I'm just going to follow my outline for my episode that I planned way back here at the beginning in my research phase and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do the actual recording. Now we're all pretty good at this, but if you haven't done all these other steps, you may get here and, and kind of fumble and, and stammer a little bit or whatever because you haven't prepared yourself. It goes back to that prep step. This is vital. So that's the recording, the main audio part. Okay. And then in my workflow, this next step is something I do. You may do it a little bit differently, but I record my intro, my mid roll, which is my little advertisement and my outro all after I've recorded my main section. Now, let me tell you why I'm going to write this down, record, intro, outro, and mid-roll, okay? I'll tell you why I do this after my main recording. The reason I do this after is because after I've done that main recording, I have a great feeling immediately following of what that content was about, how the conversation went, what were the main points we covered, you know, because sometimes a conversation will take a little bunny trail that's actually more interesting than the primary conversation you intended to have in the first place. And so that particular approach of recording the intro and outro afterward helps because then I can do an intro that is perfectly synced with the content of the main content. You see what I'm saying? I can do an outro that is perfectly synced. And because I'm doing it immediately after I stop my other recording, immediately after I say goodbye to my guest, it's all fresh in my mind. You see, I don't have to scrounge and rack my memory two weeks later when I'm trying to remember what was that episode about and what did we talk about because I got to record, a record uh, an intro or an outro. I don't have to do all that. I do it immediately following. And when it's part of my workflow, when it's this checklist, this sequence that I carry out every single time, it not only becomes habit, but it's on that checklist and I just follow the list. I, I mean, I haven't said this yet, but I will put this whole thing into a checklist that's on my computer in Trello that I use every single time that I do a podcast episode so that I don't miss these things. So when I finish that recording, I immediately go think through what am I going to say in my intro? What am I going to say in my outro? What am I going to say in my mid roll? And I record them right then. So for example, live scenario, I'm recording this right now. The moment I finish this recording and I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to go record my intro, my outro, and my mid roll because that's the next step in my process. Does that make sense to you? All right, let's move on to the next one. Get rid of this. All right, my next one up here is I'm going to add it to the correct Dropbox folder. Okay, in my workflow, we use Dropbox a lot. And I just put a B with three bumps on it. That's interesting. We're going to add it to the Dropbox folder. Okay, because that's where we keep everything. And the way we do it is I will have a primary folder for podcastification. Inside of that folder, I will have a folder that's called client audio. Now this is my particular podcast, but for all our clients, we call it client audio. So that's just what I call it for myself as well, because one of the editors on my team works on my show. And so I call it client audio. Then inside the client audio folder are a number of folders. And what they are is they're labeled this way, like for this episode. It'll say 104 space hyphen space, then the date of publication, okay? Using, using hyphens, because Dropbox goes kind of crazy if you don't use hyphens. I mean, like if you use slashes or dots or things like that, it can go kind of crazy. So we've learned you use hyphens. And so in this case, 104 space hyphen space, date of publication. And then all these things I've recorded, my main content, my intro, my mid roll, my outro, I drop into that folder. And my editor, when he opens that up, 
is going to see them all labeled that way. 104 main content, 104 intro, 104 outro, 104 mid-roll, and he's going to know exactly what to do with those things using my pre-recorded intro, using my pre-recorded outro, using my transition music, using the little hello thing that I do at the end of the podcast. He knows my sequence because I've laid it out for him and he puts it all together. He does the editing of the audio. He does the optimization. All that happens behind the scenes just because I add it to my Dropbox folder. You see, now if you're doing the editing yourself, you can still use a system like this. And what I would suggest is that you do use Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that to keep your audio organized so that you know where to go find the things that you're recording for that particular episode. Does that make sense to you? You need to stay organized. So in this case, you would be the one who has created a template in Audacity or Adobe Audition or whatever it is you're using. And you're going to pull all these resources into that template from your Dropbox or Google Drive folder. And you're going to do the editing that way. But you see, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for success because you're being organized, right? So that's my next step. It's a simple step. I just toss all the audio into the Dropbox folder, okay? My next step here is I'm going to notify the editor, okay? So in my case, I have someone else doing the editing. I'm going to notify the editor. Now, let me give you a little tip here. There is a, a, a software package out there called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. I will include it in the resources for this episode, which you can find at podcastfasttrack.com slash 104 or swipe to the description in your app and you'll find it right there. Zapier has a free program, a a free version rather, where you get a certain number of zaps is what they call it every single month. And you can set up a zap that is an automation for this so that you tell that zap whenever anything new goes into this Dropbox folder, in this example, send an email to this person with this message. Okay, so in this case, when it hits the client audio folder, send a message to Aaron, who is my editor, with this message. Hey, Aaron, there's new audio available for podcastification. Thanks for all your hard work. I don't even have to notify him. It happens automatically. Isn't that cool? Man, automate as much of this stuff as you can, especially if you're working with a team. When it's yourself and you're doing the editing, you don't really need the automation because you know, I just threw this in Dropbox. You just have to schedule out the time of when you're going to actually do the editing. What I prefer if I'm doing all this on my own is to do it all in one big swoop. I mean, I'm not going to stop between recording and then editing and then posting all those things. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to get it all done so that it's done and I don't have to put a little reminder for myself, hey, pick back up at step number 17 in your process. Ah, man, I don't wanna to have to do that. So I wanna get it all done in one swoop if I can. So I've notified my editor. The next one is um, I'm gonna create an optimized title for the episode and send that to my VA, okay? Now this is something you may need to do because you don't have a VA or anyone on your team. But what I mean by an optimized title is I'm going to do a little bit of keyword research. We have a tool we use called Keyword Finder that helps us know what are keywords related to the topic we're talking about that people are actually searching for. And we're going to create a catchy, punchy, fun, optimized title for those keywords that we're targeting. In this episode, it'll probably be something like podcast workflow or how to produce a podcast efficiently or effectively or something like that. I don't know what it's going to be yet because I haven't gotten to that step yet. But you get the point. You're going to create your title. Now, why do I put this step right here in my sequence? Well, it's because the next thing that needs to happen is my VA needs to create artwork for the episode. And that title needs to go on the artwork. So I create the title. At this point, I'm still doing that. I don't have a writer or anyone on my show that I've entrusted with my show notes process yet. And so I have the VA start creating the artwork. And that is my next step. Right here, well, actually, it's not my next step. My next, next step says edit the production or the editing and production is done and added to Auphonic. If you don't use Auphonic, it's this online audio optimizer, so to speak, that will do balancing and leveling and compression and noise removal and all kinds of stuff. I have a previous episode of the podcast about that, which I will include in the resources for this episode as well. 
but my editor finishes and he knows as part of his process, very similar to this, that he is to add that to a phonic, okay? Then we go into the next step, show notes written. So I am doing this. So I write the show notes next after my audio editor is finished. The reason I wait for my audio editor to finish is because I'm gonna put timestamps in it. So I need to have accurate length audio to know what those timestamps are. So I'm gonna write my show notes and then notify my VA. I'm gonna to say to the VA, hey, the show notes are done, here they are, um, and she's gonna take the next step. But these show notes being written are gonna be done in an SEO optimized way. You can see a video on the show notes page of our website about that. I'll include a link to that in the resources so you can see it. Tells you exactly what we do to optimize our show notes, why we do it the way we do. In fact, there are four podcast episodes previously in this podcast feed that you can find about killer show notes and how to make them the very best you can. That's the process I follow. And we've tweaked it, we've modified it, but we're optimizing that page for Google search and for Bing search and for anything on the internet people are searching for. We want our pages to rank higher in the rankings than anybody else's, if possible. It's not always possible, but we're gonna do our best. So we're gonna write those show notes and I still do the show notes for my podcast. It's one of those things I just <laughs> haven't been able to let go of yet because I honestly, I enjoy writing and I enjoy the kind of the quirky nature of my show notes. If you haven't seen them, go check out the show notes for this episode. I, I love to just kind of play around and be funny and fun and include fun stuff and all. So you'll see when you see the show notes, but to me, that's kind of fun. So it's something I enjoy doing. It may not be the best use of my time at this point, but at this point, it's an enjoyment thing for me. It's not a profit thing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to live. So anyway, show notes are written. That's the next step here. All right. Now, after the show notes are written, I've already referred to this, okay? But the artwork is created or the graphics are created. And I put a G instead of a C. Graphics are created. Um, this is not something I do. My VA is doing this, okay? But that's why I sent her the title. Because way back in the previous step, when I said contact the VA with the title, she's already getting to work. She's doing this behind the scenes. I don't have to do it. She's going to create all of the, sh the, the images. She's going to create an image for my website. She's going to create an image for the actual podcast square episode. She's going to create a YouTube image. She's going to create uh, images that I include within the post on the website. I've got this, these processes all streamlined, all laid out for her using templates in an app called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. Canva is amazing. It'll take you a little bit of time to learn how to use Canva. But what I do is I set up templates for how I want my images to look. My VA is then given a video showing her how to do it, how to do exactly what it is I want her to do. And she knows when I contact her and say, hey, here's the show notes for this episode. Here's the title for this episode. She knows to go into Canva, use this template, use this template, use this template, grab these images, change the title, make it this way. And it's amazing how it works. And it doesn't take her any more than five, 10 minutes. And it doesn't take me any more than an email to tell her to get it done. Now, if you're doing this yourself, that five to 10 minutes applies to you. You can actually create your own images so fast on Canva. You just need a little time at the front end to learn the software and to set up your templates. And once you've got those templates dialed in, you can just do this like clockwork over and over and over for every episode of your podcast. Check out Canva. It's in the resources for this episode. And I get, I get no affiliate income or anything from Canva. This is just a great resource. Okay, so the show notes images have been created. All that's ready. Now, part of her process is that she is also going to post that. That's my next step. I'm just going to say post everything. <laughs> post everything. So the, everything means on Libsyn, which is my media host. And don't forget this. The description section that you find in the podcast apps comes from wherever your podcast RSS feed is coming from. In my case, that's Libsyn. So I'm going to include my show notes with all the links, all the contact information, all that in my Libsyn description. Because I want to be able to say, like I have on this episode already, Swipe to the description and you'll find the resources. That's where they come from. So that's why I put them there. Okay, so she, my VA, is going to post them to Libsyn. She's going to also go on my website and I have a template on my website of how she's going to post everything. 
You see, do you, do you hear that word template a lot? Templates help you to repeat what you've done before in a simple way. It's already set up to succeed so that you or someone else can step in there and just do the work. When you're at the point of using a VA, which I hope you heard the previous episode, 103, about getting virtual assistance for things like this with Nathan Hirsch. You can find it in the resources for this episode as well. You're going to find that once you're able to hire a VA, a lot of this stuff can be systematized. Now, don't let me fool you here. <laughs> Systematizing this stuff is hard work. It takes a lot of time to sit down and do what I've done here and go step by step by step through a process and to document it so that someone else can do it. But according to some of the popular things out there, a guy named Rory Vaden has written a book uh, called Procrastinate on Purpose, be in the resources for this episode. And his theory is this, and it's not theory, it really works. Spend the time now putting together things that will save you time in multiplied ways later. You see what I'm saying? Spend the time now. So spend the time to make out that system, to do the sequential step-by-step-by-step -step -step logging of what it is you do. And then figure out how to set that up and at what points can you automate it, et cetera, et cetera. So that when it comes time for you to pass that on to, well, first of all, the first so that is so that you can do it consistently every single time without missing anything. That's the first thing. But secondly, when it comes time for a VA to take on those roles, you already have the system down. All you have to do is create a simple video showing them yourself walking through the system. This is how it works. And then you have communication going back and forth a little bit to refine it because they won't necessarily understand it exactly the way you meant it. And so you just have to clarify. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. It'll all get worked out because VAs are smart people. They're going to get it. You just have to be patient and be a good teacher and help them. So that's all kind of beside the point, isn't it? But it's really part of the point. That's what this whole podcast workflow thing is about. So she's going to schedule to Libsyn. She's going to schedule to my website. She's going to create short links for the episode. Everything I need done on the website side is part of her process. If you're doing this yourself, it's part of your process. You've got to document it and you've got to do that work. That's part of the price. It's, it's paying your dues, so to speak, to make this podcast work. And you will if you continue. And if you're trying to optimize and you're trying to monetize rather, you will make this thing successful in time enough that you can hire some pretty inexpensive help to help you get this thing done. You can do it. You can make it happen. All right, going on to my next step. Set up social sharing. So using something like Recur Post or eClincher or Meet Edgar, one of those, my VA is going to go on to my accounts where I've given her access and she's going to do some social sharing using images she's created, using a short link to the podcast show notes page or to Ellipse and Player, whichever way you want to make that happen she's going to do some sharing. Now, our, our team right now at Podcast Fast Track is working on audiograms and creating original, unique audiograms for clients. Okay, which is, if you don't know what an audiogram is, it's like a visual that moves. It's a, it's a small little video with a clip from the episode that tells people what they're going to hear on the episode or teases them in and makes them curious. And with those audiograms are included a link to the show notes page so people can actually listen to the episode in its entirety and hopefully subscribe. Well, we're working on these audiograms. So at some point, I'm probably gonna put audiograms into this section for her because I'm gonna have them created for my shows. And then that will be one of the ways we do social media promotion. But we do it on Twitter, we do it on Facebook, we do it on LinkedIn, just wherever. That's where we're gonna do it. Now, I have to be honest with you, at the time of this recording, I don't have this social sharing thing really, really dialed in. What I mean is I'm not consistent with it, I don't have my VA kind of trained and systematized on this yet, but that's the next step in my refining of my podcast. You see, you got to always be refining, always be perfecting your process because your process is what brings success. You see that process brings success. So consistency through a process is what's going to cause things to be consistent and thrive. So that's the next part is setting up the social media, which I didn't even write down on the whiteboard and that's okay. Now, after I've done that, you notice if you're watching the video, we're up to one last sticky note. What does this one say? This one says, send promo info 
to guest. Now this is actually along with the guest section. So I guess I could move it down like this and make another little red line here. In fact, I'm going to do that just to show that it's part of a guest episode process. But I'm going to send a promo to the guest, an email, thanking them for being on the show, maybe including a gift of some type, like a link to a Starbucks credit card or something. You see, the more generous you can be to your guest, the more strongly you're going to be able to build that relationship, which means it'll become a reciprocal thing. You do things for them, they do things for you, and they are happy to help you promote your episodes, especially because of the quality way in which you've created show notes, the quality way in which you researched and did your actual interview, and they remember that conversation because you were so good at it. You see what I'm saying here? This is a relational thing. You've got to work at this really well. But I'm going to send that promo, and it's going to include for them a link to the podcast show notes page, and I'm going to ask them for their feedback on the page. I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say, right here is our show notes page. Give them a little short link to it. In this case, it would be podcastfasttrack.com slash 104. And I would say, I would love it if you would take a look at how we featured you. We tried to highlight your brand and your uh, enthusiasm and your expertise in the most positive light we could. I would love your feedback. You see, and I'm going to bold that because I'm asking them to go look at the show notes page. It's written in a way that's intriguing, so they're going to go, hmm, how they featured me, I want to see this. And if you've done a stellar job on that show notes page, they're going to remember you, because that doesn't happen on most podcasts. Most podcasts, that is like the last thing is the show notes. They just throw up a quick little one paragraph blurb, if that, and say, there's my show notes page. Well, no way. We're not going to do that to our guests. We're going to have our guests highlighted in such a positive way. Just look at the last episode podcastfasttrack.com slash 103. You'll see how I highlighted Nathan Hirsch and I actually augmented our conversation with additional stories and additional tips to make the whole thing we're talking about much more appealing to the person who comes upon it through Google search and is reading. And I want my guests to see that is how I feature them. And that is a huge tool for not only getting more guests, but for building this strong reciprocal relationship with your actual guests, you see. Another thing I'm going to include in this is artwork. I'm going to give them my artwork and say, if you want to promote this on social media, which I do ask that you do, here's artwork for you to use to make it more appealing. If I've created a videogram, I'm going to give them a Dropbox link to the videogram or a Google Drive link to the videogram. I'm going to fill out every resource they need to promote that podcast well. So we're talking about podcast workflow. You see, workflow is what makes your podcast go. It's what enables you to be success. And as I said before, successful, maybe I should say it that way. And as I said before, process brings success. When you get this process down and you get it refined and you are consistently churning out content week after week, which disclaimer, I'm not always great at doing because life interrupts. And I figured that's one of the beauties of podcasting. I don't have a TV executive telling me I have to be here at this time to record next week's episode. I can just do it the way I want to do it. And if life interrupts and I have family issues going on so, so pressing on me that I can't record an episode this week, hey, I don't record an episode this week. That's my prerogative. And I think you listeners understand that, right? But the point of this whole thing is I want you to see what's possible and the level of detail that needs to go into great podcast production. This is not a fly by the seat of your pants thing. And it's not a build it and they will come thing. The more thought and quality and time that you can put into your podcast production, the more your listeners are going to say, hey, this, this content is great. This podcast is the best. I want to share this with people. You see, that's really how podcasting happens. That's really how you build an audience over time. It's with consistency and quality content. Yes, you can promote on social. Yes, you can do marketing. Yes, you can do all those things, and you should. But it's really going to come down to, if you're marketing a pile of doo-doo, nobody's going to care. <laughs> You've got to have great content. I hope you've learned a lot from this episode. I have, just going through it. I see places I need to improve my process. I would love to hear from you. You can reach out to me, Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y, at podcastfasttrack.com.